Hello, everybody, and welcome to the North American Bear Center. We have a lot of people here at the center today, as well as people tuning in online for our enrichment program. We do live broadcast this enrichment program every single day at 12.30. So welcome to everybody tuning in online. It looks like we already do have a bear down here for enrichment. So right here in the viewing area, we have Holly. And if you are wondering where my voice is coming from, I'm on the observation deck. So if you'd like to come watch Holly do her enrichment from up here, you, can, you are more than welcome to come join us. But Holly here is our nine-year-old female. So she's the matriarch of our enclosure. So right now she's sitting at about 260 pounds. She's a really good example of a wild female bear. So female bears out in the wild are going to range from about 90 to 300 pounds. So Holly's a really good representation of a female that you'd find out in the wild. But I'll go ahead and explain a little bit about what enrichment is. So we do try to do enrichment for our bears every single day. Just because being captive bears, they don't have the opportunity to forage as much or have to solve as many problems to get their food. And so they can get, get something called captivity psychosis, which is essentially just their brain turning to mush. And obviously, we do not want that for any of our bears. So we do try to stimulate them with some different toys and other enrichment. And looks like we also have a lucky bear entering the viewing area as well. He is our 15-year-old male, and again, he's a really good representation of what you'd find for a male bear out in the wild. He's sitting at about 430 pounds. Males in the wild are going to range from about 150 to 500, so he's sitting at kind of the top end of that range, but he's a really prime example of a wild male bear. So it looks like we threw out a cube there for our bears for enrichment, and inside that cube is going to be a bunch of treats that the bears have to work out how to get out of that cube. So they can use their really, really strong sense of smell, push it around and try to get the treats out. We also tried a more natural form of enrichment, which we tossed out that log stump there, which we stuffed with some peaches and some other nuts and things. Uh, we tried that with Holly a little bit a while ago and Holly didn't take too much to it, but we're gonna see if Lucky might find that a little bit more entertaining. But the goal of this enrichment is to get them to work their brain and figure out how to uh, problem solve to get the snacks that they want. We do some other forms of enrichment here at the Bear Center. We try to get our bears to climb for their food. You'll see on these two feeder trees up front here, we do have trolley feeders, which will try to entice them to uh, climb to get their food. Every morning, we also do a spread for our bears. So if we can get all of our bears in their personal enclosures for breakfast, the interns will come out and we will stash some piles of snacks in log piles under rocks for them to go around and find, which again, just works those brain muscles so that they can be sharp bears. Now, these two bears, Holly and Lucky, have been pretty inseparable recently. That's because it is mating season. And Holly and Lucky have pretty much coupled up every single mating season that they have been here. So during these past couple of weeks, they have been pretty inseparable. So it was very likely that once Holly came down, we would get a Lucky bear. But we have seen some mating behavior between them in the last couple of weeks. Now, we do not breed our bears here at the Bear Center. Lucky is neutered, so we aren't going to produce any cubs out of these two. Uh, there's a few reasons why we don't want to breed our bears. One of those is that we are a rescue facility, and we would like to save the room that we do have for rescue bears that really, really need it. Another reason being that we would be pretty quickly overrun with cubs, and with our four bears that we do have, we already have quite a bit of family drama. Not all of them get along, so adding even more bears into that mix would make it increasingly uh, difficult to pair up some bears that do get together. Another reason we do not breed our bears is because once cubs are about 16 to 17 months old, the mother will actually forcibly kick her cubs out of her territory. And when the territory has a fence around it, it's pretty hard to kick your cubs out to anywhere. So that would, again, not be a good situation. Uh, lastly, another reason that we do not breed our bears is because any black bear born in captivity does have to remain in captivity for the rest of its life. And we don't want to uh, contribute to that captive population. Black bears are actually doing really, really well in the wild. They are expanding in many parts of their ranges. There's about 750,000 black bears in the whole of North America, and about 12 to 15,000 black bears found here in Minnesota. They are a generalist species, so they're pretty much good to survive anywhere. You can plop them down in Alaska, or you can plop them down in Mexico, and they will pretty much be set out to go. Um, some other types of enrichment we do for our black bears is called scent enrichment. So scent is probably the most important sense for black bears. They use their sense of smell to guide them to find food very, very often. 
And so what we can do to help tune up that sense of smell is we can give them some unfamiliar smells. So sometimes we will go out into this main enclosure and we can bring in kitchen spices, exactly what you're thinking, but just the spices that you have in your spice rack at home. We can spread them around the enclosure. These are smells that they uh, haven't smelled very often, so that's a way to do that. Another thing we'll do is if us interns are out in that main enclosure, we will rub up on those trees, which leaves our scent behind. And then once we let a bear out, we can actually see that bear walk the exact steps that we walk and rub up on those same trees to remark it as their own. So if you ever see a bear kind of stand up on their hind legs and rub their back up against a tree, you might think they're scratching an itch, which is certainly a possibility, but more than likely it is them marking. So they have a really, really strong scent gland on the back of their neck that when they rub that against a tree or other material, leaves their scent down, indicating to other bears that this is their territory. Now, I said that Holly is our matriarch. Black bears do live in a matriarchal society in which the females in, are in charge. And so Holly, being our oldest female, is our matriarch. That means that this entire two and a half acre enclosure belongs to Holly. And she's just nice enough to let her other bears stay here with her. So the other bears know that she is our matriarch and she does not hesitate to keep them in check if need be. Now, we can see Holly sitting down on our bear scale down there. We do try to weigh our bears once a week just to make sure they are on track to be the right weight around hibernation. So we do also kind of uh, alter the amount of food they're getting throughout the season. So right now they're in, uh, they're in mating season. And during mating season, the bears don't normally care too much about food. So oftentimes we'll see our bears not really finish their dinners, but that's just because they have other priorities and they would rather be out finding a mate. Soon enough here, we're gonna head into normal activity where they're just kind of eating their normal amounts of food. But then as soon as we get into late fall, uh, sorry, late summer, early fall, they're going to go into a phase called hyperphagia. That is when they're eating as much as they possibly can, trying to pack on those pounds before hibernation. During hyperphagia, they will generally eat up to 20,000 kilocalories a day, which can equal up to 20 million regular calories. So they really are trying to build up that fat layer before they go into hibernation for the winter. Now, hibernation up here in the northern Minnesota lasts around seven months, and that's just genetically ingrained into our bears to hibernate for around that time because hibernation is based on food availability, and there's not a super long growing season up here in Minnesota. So when it gets to be around October, we will see our bears start into hibernation, and our bears will generally come out around mid to late April. Tasha, our youngest female, who is in her personal enclosure right now, actually hibernates right in that rock den that you can see in front of the viewing area. And then Holly usually hibernates kind of way in the back. Now, like I said, black bears live in a matriarchal system. So pretty much every year, Tasha will dig her den, and then Holly will actually steal that den from her. That is within every right of Holly's because Holly does own this enclosure. Holly's den collapsed this past spring, so we will see come this this fall if she makes Tasha kind of dig her another one, or if maybe she'll take up the work herself. We can see Lucky over there on the left taking a drink from our pond. This pond is the only man-made thing in our entire two and a half acre habitat. That's because out in the wild, black bears will generally have a water source within their home range because that's very, very important for them to be able to cool down and grab a drink of water. We do have a few people up here on the viewing deck, so I will pause and see if anybody might have any questions about black bears or any of our bears here in general. No questions so far, so I will keep talking. Um, we do also have uh, this tree feeder over here. We might try to get one of our bears to climb at some point, but it might be a little bit hot for them. So our bears did kind of just start shedding their winter coats. So then in the fall and in the winter, they have two really thick layers of fur. The black hairs that we can see are called their guard hairs. And then underneath that, they have a really thick insulative layer that helps keep them warm during the winter months. And they did just start shedding recently. So we've actually recorded the temperature on the tips of their hairs on some of these really, really hot summer days being in excess of 185 degrees. So some of these days when it's really hot, it's like running around with two black sweatshirts on. So they're generally really, really antsy to get that, that winter coat off of them. Now I'll talk a little bit about hibernation. So all four of our bears here do hibernate. That's just because it is genetically ingrained into them. Even though they have pretty much as much food as they could possibly want here, they do still have that natural uh, tendency to go into hibernation. 
Now, hibernation isn't actually technically sleeping. It's pretty much just a slow down uh, time period of all their metabolic processes. So their heart rate slows down, their breathing slows down, they stop producing waste. Um, one of our bears, Ted, he has a camera on him 24 seven and his camera is on him during hibernation and we can see him breathe about six times a minute. So that's about how slow all metabolic processes slow down. Now, all black, all black bears are born either late January or early February. So mothers will give birth to their cubs during hibernation. So they are conscious for that, and they do care for their cubs while in hibernation. The cubs are born blind and deaf and about the size of a stick of butter. And the gestation, that's because the gestation period for black bears is very short. It's about two months. But being that it is mating season right now, uh, it's through May, June, maybe early July, they don't actually start to fertilize anything until the black bear's body knows that it has enough weight and nutrients to sustain the bear itself and the cub that it's going to raise. So come fall or winter, if the bear, if a female is a little bit less than 150 pounds, the bear's body will just know that that is enough, not enough fat for the mom to sustain that pregnancy. So she will actually terminate that pregnancy if the black bear knows that it has enough weight to sustain, she will start to fertilize that egg and then she will give birth in January. Do we have any questions from anyone up on here on the deck? After they give birth, how long are they with their moms? Great question. So they are with their moms for about 16 to 17 months. And during that time, they're going to learn pretty much everything they need to know about being a bear. They're going to learn how to forage, learn how to climb, learn how, learn how to escape predators. And then when it gets to be at that 16, 17-month period, the mother will actually quite forcibly kick them out. So that's what we call family breakup. Because at that point, they are old enough to go out on their own. And then the mother will defend that her current territory. So... She'll generally give her female cubs a part of her territory, but then males will usually go on to make their own range. And sometimes the mother will go uh, as far as uh, keeping her own cubs out of her territory because at that point the mother is ready to go on and find a new mate. Any other questions up here on the deck? Yes. What was that? How old are these two bears? So the smaller bear here right under the deck is Holly. She's nine years old. And then Lucky, the bigger bear, is 15. So these are kind of our middle children here at the Bear Center. Our youngest bear is Tasha. She's seven. And then our oldest bear is Ted, and he's 25. So they're both back in their personal enclosures right now. All four of our bears don't necessarily get along, so we do kind of have to mix and match who can come out uh, of their personal enclosures at certain times. These two are perfectly fine to come out together. Holly can also be let out with Tasha, our other female. And then one of our problem child. So Lucky cannot be let out with Ted. That's because males have the natural tendency to compete for mates. So even though Ted is a captive born and captive raised bear, he doesn't really have that natural fighting tendency, but Lucky certainly does. So they actually used to be able to be let out together, but then when Lucky became mature, he started to fight Ted, and that became an unsafe situation for the two, so they cannot be let out together. Lucky and Tasha can also not be let out together. This is kind of unnatural. So if you're a male out in the wild, you have one rule, and that is to reproduce, so you should be happy about any female that gives you the time of day. And Tasha happens to have a giant crush on Lucky, but Lucky, for whatever reason, has decided that he does not like Tasha whatsoever, during mating season, Tasha will sit at the back of his pen, pawing out, trying to get his attention, and he quite, finds her quite annoying. So he will usually bluff charge or try to get her to go away. Do we have any other questions? Um, does mating season ever attract wild bears? <laughs> does mating season ever attract wild bears? Great question. Yes, it does. So during this time, it's pretty odd to have two females in this close of a vicinity, and the wild males out there can definitely sense that. So because neither of our females are being satisfied by either of our males, they will start to amp up their production of hormones, which does attract wild males to our outer electric fences. And then we have to go chase them away because having black bears out there does scare our bears inside. And that's a pretty easy job. We actually just take a, a big black garbage bag. We go out there, wave it over our heads, and that gets them running really, really quickly. They're very shy and timid animals by nature. So that's because they evolved during a time where the giant saber-toothed cat and giant short-faced bear and dire wolves were the big predators, and they preyed on black bears. 
So black bears just became very, very shy and timid, and they still remain to be that way. No one ever told them that those guys aren't out, still out trying to get them. Now we can see Lucky over there at the stand-up feeder. We do have a stand-up feeder over there, which kind of shows how tall our bears can get. Lucky's a very tall bear. He's definitely taller than me, being 5'6 when he stands up. And we just dropped some treats down there to get him to show his height. Holly seems to be maybe heading off. We might be quick to fall. Again, as I said, these two have been quite inseparable the past couple of days. Any other questions up here on the deck? Do I have a favorite bear? Great question. Um, I kind of have a different favorite bear every day. Um, I would say maybe Tasha or Ted are just kind of the more consistent ones just because they're very, very sweet and silly bears to watch. All of the bears definitely do have different personalities, which is cool to see every day. Tasha's definitely a sweetheart. She definitely knows she's cute, so she's fun to watch. Holly's pretty sassy, but we like we love her. And then Lucky's our comedian here, so he does really silly things. He likes to play around with giant sticks. He's actually responsible for dragging all those trees into the pond there. So that was all Lucky's doing. We can't get them out ourselves, so they're just going to stay there. Um, and then Ted's just the sweetest bear to ever exist. Are there other species of animals that bears will fight over territory with? So the answer to that is no. So black bears really, really try to avoid any other animals. Um, that's because they're really not the best fighters and they're really not the best hunters. So um, compared to that to a grizzly bear, they have really long claws. Uh, they're better for hunting and fighting. Black bears pretty much just focus on each other. They have shorter claws that are more adapt for climbing. So they would rather escape those other animals than try to come up to a confrontation with them. Do you have any natural predators? Generally, no. So going back wolf thing a wolf might try to go off after a bear but that's generally going to be either a sick bear or a cub um, their biggest predator is humans the number the two most common causes for death of black bears in the wild are hunting and car accidents so if they can evade those things they can generally live a very long life uh, generally live into their 30s if they can continually evade those predators any final up here on the deck all right, I'll begin to wrap this up for us. The bears have left, and that's kind of them telling me it's time to wrap it up. They picked up all the food we left out there for them. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming out to the Bear Center today and those of you tuning in online. Again, we do broadcast this enrichment program every single day at 1230 on our website, bear.org. So thank you guys for spending part of your 4th of July weekend with us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.